Hi, Pete Salsik here. I'm the screen lawyer. What does that mean, the screen lawyer? How did I come up with that name? Well, for a lot of years, I've worked with clients who make things for screens. I've worked with software companies who develop apps and, and websites and other things, and those all end up on a screen. Television companies, films, documentaries, digital entertainment on YouTube, um, advertising, all of that work ends up on a screen somewhere. It used to be it was a movie screen and a television screen, that was pretty much it, and then it was a computer screen. Now it's literally that device we all carry in our hands all the time and every other screen. And there's a thousand ways now that things can get on screens that didn't used to happen. The barrier to entry is way down and the opportunities are way up. But what has not changed, copyright law is exactly the same and still applies. Contract law is still the same and it still implies. And so what I realized that I've done over the years is when something ends up on a screen, I've done that deal. I've gone into court to litigate if somebody's taking something or it's wrongfully appearing on a screen. I've defended claims like that and I've done all of the deal structures. I've formed businesses, we get rights from copyrights, we get all, all of the rights necessary to put something on a screen. That's my work. Just became clear. I guess I am. I'm a screen lawyer. What I hope to do in a series of videos and talks and other things is help you understand what you need to do to get your stuff onto a screen. You want to get a video in somebody's hand? You want to get their thumbs stopping when they're scrolling? There's a process for that. There's a contract for that. Are you going to get paid? There's contracts for that. How's it going to work? How are you going to make sure that you have the rights to put something on a screen? That's where I come in. We're going to do a series of videos here. I provide lots of information as much as we can. I want to hear from you. If you have questions, if you something you're curious about, hey, can I do this? Hey, somebody did that to me. We're going to have a, an environment for you to pose those questions and we'll talk about it. You know, the how did I get into this? What, 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 what motivates me? Well, you know, before I, I had a period of time, my father was a law professor and I just assumed, everybody assumed, I'm going to go right to law school. And the only thing I knew for certain when I finished my undergrad career was I was not going to law school. No way. Eh, it took me about seven years of putting off law school. I was a freelance illustrator, played music in some bands, had a restaurant and a bar with a friend of mine, sold playground equipment, designed all sorts of different things in sort of a period of putting off law school. I eventually went and when I first started, I just sort of did whatever a litigation practice in a good sized firm and kind of did whatever. And then one day, about four or five years into my practice, I got an opportunity to work on what we thought was maybe a pretty simple First Amendment case involving a comic book. Turned into 10 years of litigation over right of publicity in Missouri and throughout the country. Comic books, uh, we ended up doing um, litigation over movies. We represented tattoo artists and whose tattoos had been put into movies. We sued record labels for artists whose music was included in a, a Grammy nominated songs but they weren't given credit. And just over time really gradually got into working with creatives. And I was still that guy that had been a freelance illustrator. I was still that guy that liked to play music. But I was never really able to be a professional my, my skills are just not that good in those areas. I love it, but that's not me as a professional. What I gradually learned, though, is that if I understood the legal side of that process, if I understood the risks that creatives face, if I could grim value and help them structure their deals to really protect themselves and take opportunities and make them real, then I could essentially hang out with the creatives. I could be on the team at the level where people are doing really powerful, cool stuff. And even though I wasn't playing the guitar or drawing the pictures, I was still an important part of the team because I could bring my value as a lawyer into their value in the creative process. That's why I love what I do. And now, in, in the era of, of YouTube and right click, copy and paste and digital video, there, it is so easy for so many creative people to get access to the world and put their creative work out there. And so small, independent, solo uh, businesses, small businesses, creatives come together for projects and then they separate. All those things happen now. There's amazingly cool stuff happening. 
But you know what? Copyright law and contract law still applies to all of that. And those people, you people, you need sophisticated legal work, but you can't afford to pay. You shouldn't pay big law firm fees. So there's a better way to do it. What I hope to be able to do in my practice is both still work on the great big meaty really cool big projects but also work on the really small really cool projects. To me the size of the project or the size of the client has nothing to do with the creative value. The creative value comes from what you do with what you create. If I can help you make sure that you're protected, if I can help you make sure that you get a real opportunity and that the right people or the right businesses are taking advantage of that, then that's really cool for me. And I've done it for such a long time, I'm pretty sure we can figure out a way to work together so it's not expensive for you. You shouldn't take the risk of not getting the legal work done right because you're concerned about what it costs. So. That's the screen lawyer. That's my Jones. You know, I, I get a chance to work, do the kind of legal work that I really enjoy doing with people I really enjoy working with. That's about as good as it gets, I think. And that's why I really care about what I'm doing here. Plus, every once in a while, I get to still go play music with my friends. And I still do the odd piece of artwork. And that scratch is an important niche for me, too. So if you're out there and you're trying to figure out, you know, how can I marry my job with my passion? There's a way to do it. Think about it. It took me a long time to figure it out, but now I think, think I'm in a really good place for it, and it's a great deal of fun. I hope that comes through when we're talking. I hope you see that um, when we do these videos. And if, if I get a chance to come speak to you in person, however we work together, or if you just pass this on, if you find this information helpful, share it. That's the world we live in. I, I, I got a client that they, they, they always ask the question, are your videos shareable? What a great question. You know, I can make a video, but is it, does it work on the internet? Does it get out to the people I want to reach? That's an important process too. And you know what? There's a contract that helps make that happen. Those are the kind of things. Hopefully what we'll do here is give you some information that you can use and share and add to your knowledge base. And if there's something you've seen that I haven't talked about, Throw it at me. We'll address it. We'll talk about it. We'll see if we can't help you out. That's the Screen Lawyer. I hope you stick around.